like all the time. Hi, welcome to my channel. My name is Eva. I'm feeling a bit under the weather, so my voice is going to be a bit sickish today. Let's get on to the video. So today I'm going to be talking about how to be the ideal partner for the NTJ. And obviously do not turn yourself into someone that you're not. I'm just going to give you some things that ENTJs really look for in a partner. I've done a few videos on ENTJ dating already. I'm just gonna link some in here so you can have a look. So then I'm gonna go specifically into what we're looking for. So one thing, I'm gonna get off the, the list right away. Might seem superficial, but we're looking for good looking people. I don't mean that you have to be inherently beautiful or anything. I don't think we really care about that that much. It's just that you care about working with what you have and putting some effort, whether that's exercising, whether that's trying to be fitter. That's really important to us. If you're just gonna go to this really nice date with an ENTJ and they're putting themselves like looking good, which we do when we want to, you know? They're gonna expect you to be putting the same effort. I like confidence. I like you to show that you are confident in who you are. That's something so big for ENTJs. If you show up looking like a mess all the time and you're just like not even putting that much effort, that's not gonna attract us very much. It feels like you're not taking yourself seriously, so how could you take us seriously? It doesn't matter if you look like a mess someday, because I think that's cute as well. I think I think we need to look like a mess sometimes, but if you if you are capable of owning who you are and showing up the next day like this is also me, that's really attractive. It, I know it seems superficial, but it's a real thing for Auntie Joes that you that you care about yourself just as much as you care about the other person. The second thing I'm going to talk about is being challenged. Like an ENTJ really wants someone who can push the limits to a healthy level. I don't mean in a way that's toxic, obviously, like some people want to check up on you all the time just because they want to make sure that you you're at your worst point so that they feel bad about themselves. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking mutual confidence, wanting your partner to succeed at the highest rate and wanting yourself to succeed at the highest rate. I love working in a team together and I, when I'm in a relationship, I feel like we are a team. If someone is really straightforward with what they need, oh my God, I'm gonna find that so attractive. Like I just like, I like catering my performers to what needs to be done and if that's satisfying my partner with something I'm not, I'm not again like you need to take this with a grain of salt because everything I'm saying is kind of specific to my values and my beliefs I'm not talking about you being someone's servant basically what I'm trying to say is that it's really important that you are with someone who's as effortful as you like if I can put 110% into the relationship I expect the other person to do so as well. And if they give me any less than that, I'm I'm not gonna stick with that person. Like even if I love them, I'm gonna leave because that's not the kind of relationship that I want for my life. Showing that you can deliver what you promised is really important. So definitely being honorable, being someone who says something and actually does it. I am not, I, I do not like, it's kind of like my pet peeve, I will not believe anything you say until you show me. I don't care if you read a lot of books about being a good partner, if you're not gonna be a good partner, I'm not gonna validate anything that you do before that. Like, I need you to actually deliver. Just as I expect me, when I'm learning something, to perform equally as to what I believe I should be performing as. Someone who's dynamic, someone who can show you that they're able to do things on the spot, they're not afraid of life. Loyalty. I don't think I need to say anything about this. When an ENTJ is committed, they're gonna commit. I don't expect anything less from the other party. End of story. I've mentioned this in the last video about dating ENTJs as well, but I just wanna kind of reformulate what I said because I was six months ago. I said that we as ENTJs, our love language, our primary love language is quality time. But I'm gonna say that acts of service is a big one as well. Possibly even bigger than quality time for ENTJs. 
I think when any DJ likes you, they will try to make sure that you have the easiest experience that you can have. And that means them making like systems that work really well for you. The things that you're not so good at, they're gonna try and compensate for. And I think I expect that as well from other people, like the things I'm not so good at. I really like when someone just comes in and compliments that. I personally am a bit dominant, but I, I like when someone comes in and is dominant as well. I do not want to be on a pedestal or have someone in a pedestal for me. I want us to be both on a pedestal. <laughs> so someone who is really sure of themselves, someone who's confident, can correct their wrongs, is dynamic and just mutually challenges me to be the best version of myself. That is like an ideal partner. I'm gonna say 